G'day and welcome to Emergency Medicine Topics in One Coffee. I'm Alan Giles, an emergency physician, and today we're going to talk about knee and patella dislocations. Now surprisingly, these get slightly confused. Someone yesterday told me, only a couple of days ago I dislocated my knee and my pupils dilated until I realised they're talking about that they dislocated their patella. So two completely different things. So let's first of all talk about patella dislocations, far more common, seen reasonably commonly in emergency departments. So the patella itself, well it's a big sesamoid bone that sits in the patella tendon and it's part of the patella quadriceps complex. It tends to almost always dislocate laterally out of the patella femoral groove. It occurs when you have the tibia flexed and rotated against the femur and with contraction of the quadriceps, the patella can lift and go laterally to the outside of the knee. Occasionally it goes medially. Normally the dislocation of the patella occurs in sort of teenage girls. Um, one of my daughters had it. And it doesn't actually need any direct trauma, although really it can occur in sport with direct trauma. So how do people present when they've had a patella dislocation? Well, it hurts a fair bit, and their knee is held in flexion. And you can see on the lateral aspect uh, that elevation where the patella is sitting. So it's a pretty easy diagnosis to make. And especially if you make sure you get a, a reasonably accurate history. Do you need to do an x-ray? Well, if there's been no direct trauma, or if it's a recurrent dislocation, I wouldn't x-ray it. If there has been direct trauma, it's probably reasonable to x-ray it. So how do you relocate a dislocated patella? Well, the most important thing is, well, first of all, you give some analgesia. It's a short relocation. So sometimes nitritis is sufficient, and sometimes you'll need to augment it with some IV fentanyl. So the actual technical relocation, well, you have to extend the knee and at the same time push on the, um, the laterally displaced patella from lateral to medially. So you physically place that. You'll need two people usually for it. You can do it with one. But if you don't extend the knee, you won't allow for the dislocated patella to go back into the patella femoral groove. Uh, once it's relocated, the patient feels a hell of a lot better and there may be an associated hemarthrosis. Most people say that you should make sure you do a neurovascular examination distally before and after this relocation. It's a reasonable thing to do, but the expectations are with a patella dislocation that is very unlikely to have significant neurovascular abnormality. If it's a recurrent relocation, well, the patient can go in a bandage, a uh, firm bandage or a knee brace and then go as an outpatient to physiotherapy uh, and to an orthopaedic outpatient appointment and go home with some simple analgesia. If it's the first time it's occurred, then certainly the same sort of physio and orthopaedic outpatient follow-ups are there. And sometimes people will go, do a back slab, above knee back slab to give more support. Generally, I'd still use a knee brace. Okay, so that's the patella dislocation, far more common. What about a knee dislocation? Well, to dislocate your knee takes a lot of force. Most commonly what happens is it occurs in a dashboard injury. That is that your knee is flexed and as you're in a motor vehicle accident, the dash hits your flexed tibia and drives it posteriorly. So it's posterior to the femur. So it's a posterior dislocation of the knee. Often these patients will come in as part of a trauma team call. So there may be other airway, breathing and circulation problems that need to be addressed even before you get to the knee dislocation. The knee dislocation itself, well, unsurprisingly, usually destroys the collateral ligaments and the, the cruciate ligaments. But the, probably the most important thing about it is that when you've got a knee dislocation, is that posteriorly sits the popliteal artery and it sits nice and snugly into that popliteal fossa, but it's tethered proximally by the fibrous canal at the adductor canal, a little fibrous area there, and then also this fibrous canal as you go into the soleus muscle. So it's tethered at both ends. 
As a result, it's prone to not be able to move that much, so it's prone to dissect um, or, uh, or even rupture. So vascularly, you'll have to assess distally before and after relocation. What else is posteriorly? Well, importantly, of course, the cytic nerve, as it goes into the popliteal fossa, has divided into the tibial nerve and the corum perineal or fibular nerve. If this is put on stretch, then you can examine for it by a foot drop. And that needs to be assessed before and after relocation. So here you have this posterior dislocation. Now, can you do an anterior dislocation? Well, you can, like this, but this is relatively uncommon. Most commonly, we'll see a posterior dislocation. Are there other ways apart from a motor vehicle accident that occur? Well, you can if you hyperextend the knee. In sport, very occasion you can get someone who dislocates their knee. Okay, so now we've got a patient who's got a dislocated knee. How do we relocate it? Well, first of all, you need to give deep sedation for this. You need to have a team approach. You need to have someone looking after the airway. You need to have someone scribe. You need to have someone giving drugs. And you need to have two people doing the relocation. One to hold proximally and the other to steer with traction to steer the tibia into position. Um, and you can see sort of that in this video here. Okay, so the knee goes back into position and you've checked neurovascularly after that distally. Should you do an angiogram? Because 40 or 50% of the time when you have a posterior knee dislocation, you have injury to the popliteal artery. In most places, they will do a CT angiogram. Some places will do an ankle brachial index, and if it's greater than 0.9, they don't go on to assess the, the popliteal artery. But in the places which I've worked, it's got a mandatory that you assess the popliteal artery even if the ankle brachial index is greater than 0.9. This patient's obviously going to be in hospital or they have to be assessed by the orthopaedic team to the degree of injury that's occurred to this knee afterwards. And for, for um, analgesia stake, they would have a posterior back slab placed in position uh, so that it doesn't move around. Okay, one additional thing before we finish is that quite often, say up to 40, 50% of dislocations can relocate before they come into ED. This is dislocations of the knee. Can relocate before they get to ED. So you'll see a knee that looks normal, or might have a hemarthrosis in it, uh, but if you don't, not suspicious, you may underestimate the degree of injury to that knee. So just keep aware of that. Okay, well we've looked at you know, patellar dislocations, presentation, treatment, knee dislocations, the, the uh, treatment and their presentation. Oh, I think that'll just about do for knee and patella dislocations in one coffee. I'll see you next time. Look after yourself. Cheers.